So there's two main ways that glazing impacts comfort. One is from that radiant temperature. Because it has a lower U value, it's much cooler. Um, and so we, can, we, we lose a lot more heat to that glass than we would to an exterior wall. And then there's also a, a, um, something that's called downdraft that happens, where there's a draft that comes off the window. And, and so the important thing is that the radiant temperature that's over your whole body, you're going to be feeling cold. Whereas the draft is more like a local, like your ankles are feeling cold, or your, um, yeah, or your hands may feel cold if it's on a desk or something. Um, so there are two kind of different types of comfort. Too. Yeah. Okay. So for the, the radiant comfort, there's two factors that imp impact that. So one is the U value of your glass. So how much heat are you losing through your glass? So if you have a really good triple pane piece of glass, it's going to be a much warmer interior t temperature. And um, you know, you'll, you'll lose less heat to it because there's a lower delta T. Okay. Yeah. Triple. Exactly. <laughs> and the other is what we call the V factor. So the V factor is how much your body is seeing that glass. So if it's a really big window and you're standing really close to it, like say your studio desk is right next to a really big floor to ceiling piece of glass, you're going to have a very big V factor to that piece of glass. If you're in an old building that has kind of punched windows and you're three back, three desks in, you're going to have a very small V factor to that glass because it's a very small percentage of what you're seeing. So the smaller the window is, the further away you are will impact, um, how much, will impact whether or not it will make you uncomfortable, in addition to um, the temperature. Hmm. And then for the downdraft, there's three factors that impact the downdraft. Um, and basically what happens with the downdraft is warm air is typically delivered in the, um, around the ceiling, or you know, it's in the, closer to the um, top of the room. And it hits the glass, and cool air falls, and natural convection. And so it falls down the surface of the glass. And it, as it, as it kind of continues to cool, it picks up more and more speed. So the temperature of glass influ influences how, how big that draft will be, because the cooler it is, the more it's going to cool down, and the faster it's going to go. The taller the glass is, the more it's going to kind of continue to pick up that speed and have that draft. And then how far you are from the glass is going to impact whether or not you feel that draft. So again, if, the, if I'm 15 feet away from that piece of glass, I'm not going to feel that draft. It's going to have dissipated in the room. So it's really only if you're, you know, the closer you are to it, the more you're going to um, feel it. And so what we do typically in a t traditional design um, in most projects that are in the north of our country is we put in a, a perimeter heating system. So it's often radiant heating or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, to warm up that glass, to try to counterbalance that um, radiant t temperature loss as well as the, the cool draft that's coming off of that. And so it's a supplemental heating system. We have heat that's delivered, you know, into the, whether it's a VAV system or whatever the mechanical system is for space, we have heat that's delivered to keep the space comfortable. But that perimeter heating system is really just to keep the glass warm so that we're not to, to keep the space comfortable. And it also has the, the sort of the adding a perimeter heating system uses more energy because we're now running a separate system. But it also actually degrades the performance of our glass. Um, so it, it, it lowers the U value by heating up that glass and minimizing the air film. It's, it's really, it's if there's a least efficient spot to locate heating within your building, it's right out the window where you're losing it. So like so much heat is just being thrown out the window because we put it right next to, next to it. So there's a lot to be saved that if we could find some way to remove that. And so I think just, just to give you guys sort of where we're going here, I mean, this, this point here about the supplemental heating this, uh, at, the, at the window, I mean, if you want to design a building that's all glass or that has lots of glass in it, then you end up, when you really make the building, you end up at this point where you're like, oh, man, we got this glass. Man, it's going to be cold. OK, we have to put in this, uh, uh, this radiant um, uh, supplemental heating system, which, as you just said, super inefficient, so it wastes a bunch of energy, plus it's also expensive, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and I had no idea that it also um, reduces the U value of your glass yeah. Yeah. over time or just, just whenever just it's on? Just whenever it's on. Whenever it's on, yeah. And the, the thing is that it kind of, because you're heating up that glass, you're removing kind of the resistance you get from the air. Got it, got the, it. In, in front of that, between, between the surface. Okay. The you guys really did study building science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we live up to our titles. Okay. Good enough. But, you know, so one of the things that I noticed as a practitioner working was that sometimes we were able to get rid of the radiant heat, whether it was because the windows were small enough, or we did things like going to triple glazing. And so I started to ask some of the engineers that I was working with and other people, so what is that threshold? Like, how do I, because one of the interesting things that I, I, I was noticing was that when we were able to actually get to that threshold where our design was comfortable enough that we didn't need the perimeter heating, as you said, it's expensive, we could actually, it was actually cheaper to, to, to put in higher performing glazing. So I, I could afford triple glazing if I didn't have to have the perimeter heating that. That's actually a cheaper solution than to put in this supplemental system. So you end up with a better building, 
that costs less and is going to operate. And, and just like for an, an order of magnitude of like the statistics we found on one of our projects, that we found that we can put in an extra pane of glass to do go make it go from double to triple, and that would eliminate our need for perimeter heat. The cost of the extra pane of glass was about a tenth of that of the perimeter heating system. Hold in on. this case, in this case. Hold uh, on, did you say you said the cost of the glass was uh, uh, to a add the extra pane yeah. in to to make it to change it from double to triple was far far less than the than the perimeter heating. Um, I mean, and granted, this was a product where we were using European glass that we were, it was easier to go to triple pane, but it's still, on almost all of our projects, we can Yeah, for every project where we've savings. been able to kind of cross that threshold, we found it's cheaper. The problem is we weren't exactly sure where that threshold was. Like, when was our glass comfortable that we could make the case that we could eliminate permanent heating? Okay. Okay. So it all came back to comfort, which is why we yes, went down that road. Yeah. Exactly. It's about comfort yeah. and, like, how do you... Yeah. And, and so what you're saying is that there, there was some question... You, you weren't sure yeah. if, if, if the, the design you were making was going to result in exactly. the optimal yeah. levels of comfort. And so you, you had this surefire win. We can save you all this money. We're just going to throw another plane, plane of glass on there, and then we're going to get rid of this, um, mm -hmm. this perimeter heating system. But we're not really sure if we're going to make everybody mad because right. they're going to be uncomfortable. And when we talked to different engineers, they kind of had different responses of when, when it was comfortable and when they would be willing, because they own the, the supplemental right. heating system, when they would be willing to get rid of it. Right. So we, I had one engineer tell me when I asked them that they would do it when the U value of the glass was the same as the U value of the wall, which you know you guys probably aren't specifying glazing yet, but that doesn't exist. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind it'd of be like, like <laughs> some fancy aerogel, <laughs> yeah. you know, quadruple pane. Um, so it was kind of like, okay, that does that doesn't seem like the right answer. Um, <laughs> what else could it be? And so that was where, sort of where we embarked. We decided, well, this seems like a good issue to understand better because it'll benefit our projects. It'll benefit our practice. We'll be able to kind of always design facades that are comfortable and not have to have the supplemental system. Okay. And so. we can just have simpler, like, sleeker designs that don't have this extra system. In. Right. That's, Which it's just we like the aesthetics of better. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's really okay. a win-win all around. So the goal here is how do we eliminate the perimeter heating? You already know that you, if you do, you're going to save a lot of money, but you're trying to figure out if everyone's going to be comfortable when you do yeah. it.